In the upper northwest corner of Illinois, within the rolling hills, lies Joe Davies County, home to three engineering marvels. These marvels highlight the great construction feats of the past. The Winston Tunnel was the longest tunnel of its time in Illinois, while the Georgetown Bridge helped to spur economic growth. As for the Galena Post Office, it is still in operation today. These timeless landmarks have endured decades of hardships and have shown their economic contributions and historical importance to the surrounding area. Each has left their own footprint in today's society. In 1888, 354 men began construction on what would become the Winston Tunnel. The Winston Tunnel is located about 18 miles south of East Dubuque and was one of many stops on the railroad track from Dubuque to Chicago. The reason for the track was to go out west, but the tunnel was needed to bypass terrain that was too rough for the trains. An active railroad company, Minnesota and Northwestern, decided that it was necessary to create a tunnel to successfully make the journey. The Winston Tunnel was 2,440 feet long and 18 feet 6 inches tall. At the time, it was the longest rail tunnel in Illinois. Most hills in Jordavis County are made of limestone, but little did they know the hill they selected consisted of Maquoketa Shale, which would later cause problems. The tunnel had a station positioned at both ends. On the east end was the race station, and on the west end was the Winston station. During construction, it was necessary to walk from the local hotel or use a handcar as a way of transportation. Construction of the Winston Tunnel started in early 1887 and cost more than $600,000. The very first construction of the tunnel consisted of arched concrete floors and walls that are lined with stone. Due to the fact that soap clay crumbles over time, it created the need for embracement of the walls. One foot by one foot pieces of timber were used to brace the walls. During all of this construction, there were many workers that were injured and one that died. John Hill died on March 12, 1887 at the age of 32. He is buried at the Prospect Hill Cemetery which is located half a mile from the tunnel. Along with the construction of the tunnel, a fan house was built on the west end of the tunnel in 1916. The reasoning behind the fan house was that the smoke would get so bad inside the tunnel sometimes that it made it very hard to breathe. The fan was a diesel powered engine with 310 horsepower and was 14 feet in diameter. Before the fan house was ever built, the engineers would soak towels and wrap their heads and hands to lessen the discomfort. When that did not work to reduce the amount of smoke, the railroad tried to increase the speed of the trains as they were traveling through the tunnel. This idea failed as well and led to the fan house. On the many occasions that reconstruction was necessary, it was because of the many complications that grew as the tunnel was used more and more. The main complications in the tunnel were that wind, salt, water, and ice, which were mainly created by the spring within the tunnel, caused deterioration of the stone walls and concrete floors. In the winter, the ground would freeze and create ice, which would make it hard to pass the tracks. The workers would throw down salt to melt the ice, but in the process, it destroyed all the walls and floors. Through its many problems, it led the tunnel to be repaired from 1902 to 1964. The tunnel cost $22.6 million in repairs from these simple complications. These complications were also the things that pushed the Chicago Great Western to realize that it cost too much to maintain the railroad. On October 31, 1971, Delbert Hatton drove the last train through the Winston Tunnel. Even though it is no longer in use today, it is still an engineering marvel because of all the feats and complications that it has overcome. The Chicago Great Western Depot Museum, located in Elizabeth, Illinois, contains many historic artifacts that preserve its history. The tunnel still stands today and will always be a historic landmark located in Joe Davies County. Another timeless landmark located in Joe Davies County is the Georgetown Bridge. The Georgetown Bridge is located three-tenths of a mile north of Elizabeth and runs over the Apple River. The original bridge was built in 1859, which would make it more than 150 years old. However, there were many complications and the bridge also required reconstruction through the years. Besides its use as transportation for ore, the Georgetown Bridge was one of the only places for locals to cross the Apple River. United States Highway 20, known today, is nothing like it was back then. The bridge was the connecting route from Galena and Scales Mound to Elizabeth. The Georgetown Bridge was also a major contributor to the growth and expansion of the town of Elizabeth. The construction of the original Georgetown Bridge was completed in 1859. This bridge was made of wood and was a three-span bridge. However, with a flood in 1871, the bridge was relocated and built out of steel. Once again, a flood in 1892 wiped out the bridge and forced the relocation for one final time. 
In 1892, the bridge was built in its current location and was built out of iron. Uh, at that point in time, they had um, the way it worked is the uh, uh, the township uh, board of supervisors, the, uh, the township road commissioner, would go to the county board, and they would ask for uh, sharing of funds to build a new bridge, and the county would pay half, and the township would pay half, and these bridges cost anywhere from maybe fifteen hundred dollars to forty five hundred, and like I say. The bridge was 11 feet 7 inches wide and 204 feet long. The Georgetown Bridge failed its final test during the flood of 2010. With the water levels reaching 30 feet higher than normal, it finally collapsed. The flood forced a big oak tree to push most of the bridge downriver until both the bridge and the tree rested against another bridge. Many people think that it may not be replaced because it is going to cost $1.6 million just to repair the bridge. However, some others think that it may be possible to rebuild the bridge if Joe Davies County is considered a disaster zone and given federal aid. The flood took place from July 23rd to July 25th of 2010 and will always have its name in history for being the flood that finally took down the Georgetown Bridge. The final engineering marvel located in Joe Davies County is the Galena Post Office. The Galena Post Office is the second oldest continuously operated post office in the United States and was the first to be named a Great American Post Office by the Smithsonian. The post office is located in downtown Galena, Illinois at the corner of Green and Commerce Streets. The location is perfect because the commute to the post office is relatively easy for many locals. Senior citizens are able to walk downtown Galena and make their way to the post office. Although, from the time that it was built in 1858 up until now, it has not changed too much. Also, the post office has a history of being associated with Ulysses S. Grant. I mean, that's where he did his post office work. They opened it um, you know, in 1859. Uh, it was a U.S. Customs House in addition, which you wouldn't normally think of having a Customs House that would handle duties and things like that uh, you know, in the middle of the United States, but uh, we did. Elias Parker was the main engineer of the project, and he was also a close friend to President Grant. Ely Parker was Native American, and many people thought that he did not belong in this type of society. He pursued his career as an engineer, even though it was difficult, and continued on past the post office and customs house to create the Marine Hospital, which was also located in Galena, Illinois. The Grand Army of the Republic, also known as the GAR, held big meetings there to discuss any issues at hand. President Grant also used it during his presidential campaign, which he later won. The main purpose behind this building was to be the post office and also to register Upper Mississippi steamboat cargoes. The rivers of the area were an important part of the local transportation system and it created a need for a customs house and helped the town of Galena grow. They put in the foundation, the basement, the foundation walls. He didn't want that to settle because it's on a river floodplain. There's not solid rock underneath. So he had them bring in these bars or pigs of lead and they stacked them all around the perimeter of that foundation equal to the weight of what the final building would be. They cal he calculated that and they had lead, it's really heavy, so they stacked all these bars of lead around you know, way up and uh, then he let that go through the winter because frost heat will settle your foundation and then you can have a completely solid settled um, uh, you know, foundation to work on. And then they built the rest of the building. He also st uh, um, stipulated it had to be built out of Nauvoo limestone. Limestone around here is good, but he wanted the best available. The building itself was made out of Nauvoo limestone. The limestone was shipped up on sea boats to Galena from the Mormon town of Nauvoo. With all the workers that Parker had, construction did not take very long for the style of architecture that was being used. The architect Amy B. Young used a Renaissance revival style that made the building look both intricate and unique. Even though it only took two years to complete this project, this project has definitely proved its worth. The Galena Post Office has had lasting effects because it is still functioning and is a useful part of many people's lives. The Post Office is a landmark among many other things and has a lot of history behind its creation. It has survived local weather, floods, town expansions, and time marching on. The construction and engineering techniques of the 19th century have touched the future of the 21st century. The Winston Tunnel, the Georgetown Bridge, and the Galena Post Office are just reminders of how engineering marvels in Joe Davies County truly have lasting effects on both the communities and the people in them. These landmarks are among the greatest engineering structures that were built in Joe Davies County and have gone through many different trials and changes as the years went by. Even with some problems, these historical landmarks will always have their place remembered in the history of Joe Davies County.